Hi, I'm Ollie. I'm an average student struggling through school. Not only are my grades bad, but I also never arrive on time. I'm always in a rush in the mornings. I wake up at 5 to make breakfast for my siblings. I get ready while they're eating and then I grab whatever foods are left and eat while I drop them off at school. Some days, Dad's old rickety car won't even start. No matter how hard I tried, something always goes wrong. Either the car just conks out on me or I get a flat tire on Mrs. Wiseman's corner before I could drive away. And she yells at me about my siblings' late tuition payments. My troubles don't end there. The moment I finally step foot at my school, Principal Green is always there to greet me. And not in the warm, welcoming way. Late again, Mr. Ramirez? What is it now? Aliens abducted your dog? A giant snake ate your car and you had to walk? I'm sorry, Principal Green. It, it won't happen again. Oh, don't spare me the dramatics, Mr. Ramirez. I've heard that one before, and yet here you are, late. As usual, detention at five, Mr. Ramirez. Mrs. Green, please, I can't stay late. I have to pick up my siblings after school. Their teacher will report me for negligence again if I'm late one more time. I just need a bit of understanding here, Principal Green. Just a bit of help. When I say detention at five, I mean detention at five. Now get to class, honestly, asking me for help. Do you think I became the principal of this institution by asking for help? Only the weak need help, Mr. Ramirez, and you certainly seem to always need a lot of it. Principal Green made me scrub the gym floor and walls. By the time I finished, it was dark. I rushed to my car, and after ten tries, it started. I drove as fast as I could, but I knew no matter how fast I went, I wouldn't be able to turn back the clock. I was two hours late to pick up my brothers and sisters from school, and they were waiting outside the gates because everyone else had left and gone home. Nobody liked helping my family out. They saw us as a charity case and didn't want to get involved. Misha and Kenny were full-on crying. Trent and Opal were just staring blankly at their shoes. Why did you take so long, Ollie? I'm starving. My tummy hurts. I felt really bad that night, so I dug into my piggy bank and treated them all to a pizza, even though I couldn't afford it. I just told myself I'd skip lunch the next week. Mom and Dad would sometimes send me money, but it was never enough, and I was too ashamed to ask them for more sometimes, because I know they have tough lives where they work. Dad's a trucker, but he lives with his new family, and Mom works as a maid abroad. The one person who cheered me up was Yara. She was my neighbor and my first crush. We were in the same class and she usually comes by our house and brings food for my siblings whenever we weren't doing so well. The next week, my class was assigned a special project for the school fair. We didn't really want to do anything, because my classmates wanted to enjoy the fair, but because Principal Green wanted to teach me a lesson once again, she made us do a corn dog booth that also served drinks and cotton candy. It was a lot of work. None of us even knew how to cook. Now, my classmates despised me even more. It was because of me that we all had to take turns manning the booth. We were certain to miss out on a lot that was happening due during the fair, and on top of that, we'd have to spring for the ingredients and to rent the equipment. For weeks, my classmates didn't even talk to me. Not only did we have to work during the fair, now we were paying for stuff too, and we wouldn't even get any of the money we'd make. It all went straight into Principal Green's pockets. I did all the corn dog batter at home. I was lucky it was a weekend, so my siblings could help me prepare a lot of the food. I appointed Trent to watch over his little brother and sisters while I was gone. But I was barely five minutes away when I got a call from him. I made a U-turn so sharp I could smell rubber inside the car. Opal had collapsed. I rushed her to the hospital. I was lucky I ran into my Aunt Gertrude there. She offered to keep an eye on my siblings and to call me with news about Opal. And when I was sure she was in good hands, I left for the fair. When I got to the fair, my classmates were already pissed that I was an hour late. But when I opened the trunk to get our supplies out, they started yelling at me. The batter had spilled everywhere. The hot dogs were swimming in goo. There was nothing we 
could save. All that trouble for nothing. My classmates were furious. You are so useless. Oh, you're so lazy. You're always late and you drag your whole class down with you. You're nothing but a delinquent. You're so irresponsible, Ollie. You're never going to grow up and you'll never become anything. You're so useless. Even Nyara was mad. She didn't talk to me from that day on. To pay for Opal's medical bills, I had to work as the school's gardener's assistant. It was a tough job, but it was the only place I could find work. Besides, I was thinking it'd be like two birds with one stone. Work and school at the same place. I'd save on gas money. The gardener, Mr. Rivers, was nice to me, though. Taught me everything he knew. My classmates were the opposite. They humiliated me when they saw me working on the rose bushes. Ha <laughs> ha, look, it's the delinquent. Working in the dirt where he belongs. And we all thought he couldn't sink any lower. This is your future, Ollie. Forever a low-income worker. So, does this mean we own him? I mean, our tuitions pay for his salary. But my classmates' happy days were soon to end. Because that next week, a delegation from an Ivy League school came to our campus. They were there to gather applicants for their prestigious university. They held an event where the parents could scope out the brochures and the students could take tests and interviews to see if they were qualified to be accepted there. After two Two days of exams and interviews, three were left out of the entire graduating class. I didn't bother to apply or participate. My grades weren't good enough, and I couldn't afford it anyway if in any case some sort of miracle happened and they accepted me. Besides, that week I was busy tending to the new lemon orchard that Principal Green wanted to start. While I was sweeping the leaves beside the gymnasium, something caught my eye. It was a math problem on a chalkboard, and no one had bothered answering it. It really bothered me. So I walked to the stage and started figuring it out. After five minutes or so of just staring at it, I began to write. And in a minute, I'd solved the equation. I heard the entire gymnasium gasp behind me. I was so captivated by the difficult equation that I didn't even notice the event was still ongoing, and the place was packed with students, parents, teachers, and the Ivy League delegation, and the last three hopefuls. All three had not been able to solve the math problem, but I did. The delegation came up to me and asked me if I would like to apply for their university, but I told them my situation. They were so overjoyed by how flawless my math was that they were willing to overlook my grades since they found out why I didn't excel at school. They even offered me a scholarship. Suddenly, I was a star. Everyone there congratulated me. Even my classmates who used to look down on me. Being smart was cool now, apparently. Every parent in there approached me. They wanted me to tutor their kids. The girls began to line up to ask me to prom. They too wanted me to spend evenings at their houses to be their tutor. I made a ton of money from doing that, and I got a lot of dates too. I mean, in our small town, being a future Ivy Leaguer was a big deal. I felt like a star quarterback. That was when Principal Green called me into her office. Hmm... You've caught me in a dilemma, Rivera. Your grades are horrendous, but you might become the first Ivy Leaguer to come from my tenure in this school. But now, I'm thinking, maybe I should adjust your grades a bit. But, if I'm gonna scratch your back, you gotta scratch mine, right? How's this? Date my daughter, you graduate. Don't date my daughter and kiss your Ivy League dreams goodbye. Sound good? I knew what she was doing. I was in the limelight. I even made it to a few articles in the local news. Principal Green wanted me to date her daughter because Lily was an aspiring actress, and she wanted to use my newfound fame to catapult her own daughter to stardom. But I bit the bullet. This was the only way I could take care of my siblings. With an Ivy League education, I might finally be able to take us out of poverty. I dated Lily, and she wasn't like her mom at all. She was actually nice and kind and extremely beautiful. And you know what I found out? Lily didn't like her mom one bit. 
She knew all along how mean her mom was and how she tormented some of the students she didn't like. Lily, too, was a victim of her mom's controlling nature, and all she wanted to do was get out of the house. I fell in love with Lily, and she fell in love with me, and so I made her dreams come true. We eloped. We got engaged, and when Principal Green found out, she was furious. It was too late for her to do anything, though, because we had already graduated and I was on my way to becoming an Ivy Leaguer. Lily moved into my apartment that the school granted me. She started auditioning for roles and she was cast in a sitcom. In my time at the university, I wrote an article that got a lot of buzz. It was all about my high school and the principal who always put her own students down and took advantage of her powers. Principal Green was kicked out of the school and she was stripped of her license the moment her wrongdoings were exposed. On our wedding day, she came despite not being invited. She was wearing ragged clothes and looked worse for wear. Please, son, I just wanted some food. Just a little bit of help. Funny you should say that, Susan. Didn't you tell me only the weak need help? You certainly seem like you need a lot of it right now. I tossed her a piece of chicken and she picked it up and ate it like a ravenous dog. And then the bells sang for Lily and we kissed to the cheers of our old classmates and our loved ones.